Hello, good evening. Welcome once again to Hucknall in Nottingham. I did, bet you didn't expect to see me back so soon after last night's hockey chat, but here we are. Obviously, the news dropping today that Omar Pasha is to become the CEO of the Nottingham Panthers. So this is exclusively going to be given over to the Omar Pasha news. Uh, did have a couple of other questions in, uh, which I will save to next week's hockey chat. Um, so sorry to those who, who, who sent them in, but this is purely going to be uh, a, a Omar Pasha special. Um, loads and loads of questions and comments come through already. Uh, so... Uh, There'll be a lot to go through, a lot of different subjects, um, but I'm not expecting this to last as long as a, probably a normal hockey chat, but we will see how it goes, of course. Uh, a couple of other things to cover. If you want to send a question in uh, via Twitter, at John O'Bullard, I am monitoring that, or you've got the chat box just to the right-hand side. Uh, as I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm not sure where it is on your screen uh, watching this, uh, but you can just pop something in the chat box. And if you've got any comments or something you want to join in or something you don't agree with or agree with, then just pop it in the chat box. And as Ellipsis already has, saying, wow, this week has gone <laughs> quick. Feels like the hockey chat was just yesterday. It certainly was. Although this is a special occasion, so a special one-off special. So, uh, yes, we will we'll crack straight on. Just re a reminder that this will be available as an audio podcast uh, 10, 15 minutes after the end of uh, this recording. So if you want to listen to it in the car on a walk or whatever, or if you, you can play it on your Amazon Alexa or other uh, AI machines are also available or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, it's all, it's all on there. All the links are in the description uh, down below, and uh, I will pop them on Twitter and Facebook as well. Okay, uh, we will crack straight on. So for those that, that don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, uh, Omar Pasha was confirmed as the Chief Executive Officer of the Nottingham Panthers at 6 p.m. this evening evening. Uh, there was also an interview uh, with, that he did with Dan Kerry that was put out uh, on the club's YouTube feed as well and also on social media. That is well worth a watch. It's a great interview. Uh, say, um, we'll, we'll talk about the, the interview as, as we go through tonight. Um, so yes, uh, first of all, I'll give you my feelings. I'm very, very happy with the appointment. Uh, I think Omar Pasha has done a wonderful job in Dundee as both coach and general manager. He, he comes into Nottingham pretty much as a general manager type of role, I would expect. And he is just the sort of person, I think, who will be ideal to um, speak to fans, uh, increase sponsorship, look at increasing attendance. Um, so I am ve very, very excited to see uh, how he's going to approach the role and what changes are going to come, if any. Um, but uh, I am incredibly optimistic about this appointment from what I've seen on social media, from the replies. Uh, it appears to have gone down very, very well with the fan, fan base. So, you know, it, it's uh, it, all in all, it looks a very positively received uh, appointment by the Panthers. Uh, and going through the, the sort of comments and questions that I, I've got since I said I was going to do this, it appears that a, a lot of people feel the same as well. So uh, let's crack on. And the first question comes from Paul Carruthers, who a lot of people know Scooby. Scooby is a Hall fan uh, and was the announcer at Hall when Omar Pasha was the coach and, and the player there as well. So uh, he knows Pasha very, very well. Um, what Scoob says is, are Panthers fans going to accept some of his signings? He has a great track record of finding rough diamonds from colleges, but Panthers fans also have a track record of moaning at signings of players from lesser clubs. Um, that is a good point. And I think anybody who, who reads The Cage will will, uh, will know that that is very much the case. Um, but he has a very good track record in finding good players. Uh, I think um, Com Combs was a great signing, very much unknown. Uh, Benson, another one for this season from, from Dundee. 
So I, I think it depends how much he's going to get involved with the recruitment. Like from the interview, he, he says he, he will initially, but then probably leave it till the head coach. So I expect he will, I suppose he will give advice to the head, head coach. And I, I imagine he will do some recruiting if asked, but I don't think that is going to be his primary role from what he was saying on the interview. So whether he takes a step back from that sort of thing, I, I don't know. But you, you he ha does have this ability to unearth some great players. And I know there was a reply to Scooby's tweet that he sent in to me, which, which was saying, I would rather have a good rough diamond than you know an established flop, which is a, a very, very fair point. Very, very fair point. Um so let's move on to the next question, which comes from Antoine Marijon, who says, what should be his priorities over the next month? A, a new coach. B, retaining players. C, signing new players. D, sorting out the off-ice team. E, sorting out the office staff. F, sorting out the social media team. G, all of the above. H, something else. Uh, I think the main priority is going to be a new coach. Uh, I think the head coach has to be the absolute top priority at this very moment. Um, as he said in in his interview, we are already into May. Um, the season, I would think players will be coming back in August. It, it, the window is shorter because of the later season. So I think a head coach is very, very much the top priority over the next month. Uh, after that, I think it's it's sort of all of the above. There's a lot that needs sorting out. You know, we've been saying it for many, many weeks on here, um, you know, how things aren't great. So, you know, the playing staff needs looking at, the off-ice staff need looking at, you know, thing, things need to change. And and hopefully he will make those changes and he'll make positive changes and, and good changes. Um, but I think definitely a new coach and then obviously looking at everything else uh, along with that. Um, but yes, coach priority for me, but then everything else after that. And there was another uh, comment that came in, David Gallagher, who says, if you are Omar, other than the head coach position and retain player list, what three things do you think need addressing ASAP? I think that's then the, the, the off-ice stuff. So uh, media, back office staff, um, you know, social media team, I think all that needs sorting out as well uh, and I think think that that is a big priority as well because because I know that that has not been great over the past few months at all so I think he's, he's got a massive job on there's there's no doubt about that um but from from the interview I, I, I took a lot of positivity from what he had to say in that particular interview so David Stevenson asks, um, really like the Pasha appointment, but what do you feel is a realistic target for him to achieve next season? Should Panthers go heavy on a challenge cut run, for example, and get that winning feeling back and grow from there? Uh, and then Chris P at Chansu92 also says, what should Omar's realistic targets be? I think it's very difficult for expecting, expecting somebody to come in and make us a top club straight away um a lot of things need to happen a lot of things need to change and that is going to take time and i hope that the fan base give him that time because it's, it's it's a massive job however i think it's not too unrealistic to expect the team to be on a more competitive footing next season on the ice and i'm not saying and i'm not saying go out and, and win everything because, you know, that's unrealistic. It takes very, very special teams to go and do that. And I'm not saying we can't do that in the future, but but expecting a team to come in and win everything straight away is, is just, you know, not, not realistic in the slightest. So um, I, I think what we need to look at realistically is changing everything off ice and getting that sorted out and, and in a good place. Uh, is a realistic target, and I think getting a team that is competitive on the ice, so competitive in 
all tro- all competitions. I'm not saying necessarily go and winning winning them, but although that would be nice. Uh, I'm not, not going to say it wouldn't be. But I think just getting a competitive team more than anything else. Uh, so that is is what I would be looking for from Omar Pasha uh, in the sort of shorter term. Uh, interesting question from uh, Adam RP eighty nine, a regular contributor, and he says, "Will this have helped season ticket sales and renewals? Um, possibly, but I think more the first signings and the head coach signing will help towards that more. This certainly uh, won't have had a ne- negative effect. I, I'm absolutely certain, and it, it may have increased sales." Um, but I think we have to wait and see. Uh, we have to wait and see um, what the what the head coach, who the head coach signing is, and also who the who maybe the first couple of players uh, are, who either come back or a new new players, new imports come in um, before we can sort of really assess whether it will will have a, have an impact on season ticket sales or renewals. Right, and I head to the comments because I can see there's been quite a few already um one from david carnell who uh is a comment reg- regarding the interview he says he said a lot of positive things recognize we've lost our identity and the culture had changed i just hope patch is given a free reign to change things and moreover given the time and resources to achieve this we have major issues and if he can get us back on track to su- success should follow couldn't agree more. And, and that was the things I loved about what he said in the interview. He said things about identity. He said things about culture. He said thing else, things about fan engagement. And that, all the things we've sort of been talking about on here for, for many, many, many months, he, he said. And the, the one thing that really, really, um, really pleased me with what he said was when he said, I want the club to be the, the gold standard at everything that everybody else looks up to. And he, he, he says we're, we're a long way from that at the minute, but that's where we need to be. And that's something I've been saying for months and months and months. And I was so pleased to hear him say that. Um, and that that made me think, yes, we, we have got uh, someone in charge who, who can probably strive to achieve that. Because the thing is, you, you look at the location of the arena you look at the number of seats that are available you look at the infrastructure around there is no reason why we can't be the gold standard at everything in the league everything um and so i was delighted to hear him say that in the interview that that really did give me a lift when when he when he said that Okay, quickly uh, pop to the comments. Uh, Mike Cyclone, I was super impressed with his interview. Excited to see what's to come. Uh, Rob Asbury, do you expect a Q&A from Pasha with the fans soon? Uh, yeah, there's a question on that later, so uh, hold that thought, Rob. Um, Glenn, uh, Antoine forgot Zed, Omar hiring Jono as Panthers commentator. <laughs> right, I, we'll, we'll see. I, as I said the, the other week, never say never, but you know, I, I think there's far bigger priorities ahead of Omar Pasha than that at the minute. Um, I can't start again, Charlotte. I cannot. <laughs> just just go back to the start when we finish. Uh, Leona says, would you keep any players from this season? If I was Omar, I would be keeping Welsh, Boy Van Richards if possible, but I'm not sure with Welsh or any others. Uh, well, Welsh is on a two-year uni deal. To be honest, as, as I've said in the hockey chat yesterday, uh Boy Van and Richards were mentioned, but to be honest, if none were kept and they, they had a complete clean slate, I, w- I wouldn't shed a tear either. Um, Lola says, I don't think he will, s- I will speak him because he's such a good player. I reckon he's going to get better. Um, so two years, so not possible he's here next year. I'm not sure what that's referring to. But uh, Matthew Alford, makes sense for him to leave recruitment to head coach once appointed. He has a huge job on his hands sorting out the off-ice stuff, so the sooner he can concentrate that on the be- uh, the better. I totally agree. Um, what do you think of Dan's comment about having a lazy team? Yeah, I I thought that was a strange one in the interview where he said, he, he said, uh, what was it? 
Um, we've had a team that's not worked hard for the past few years. And I was really taken aback with that because one thing you cannot accuse the, the, the Panthers team of this season is not putting the effort in. It's just they've not had the quality. Um, so, yes, it was a very, very, very strange question uh, that he put to him. Um, so, yes, I, I, I must admit that did um, perplex me somewhat. Uh, when he said that, because I thought it was incredibly unfair, especially on this season's team. Um, Matt Alford, again, he says, fan engagement and Neil Black don't exactly go hand in hand, so hopefully uh, MB takes a massive back seat. Mm -hmm. Anthony Russell, serious question. You've called for Black to sell the club. Does this appointment make you hit the pause button? I think it does for a bit. Um, I think... Like anything, when something new happens like this, then I think you have to reflect and allow it time to work. So in that regard, yes, I think you probably do have to hit the pause button in that regard. But then there's other questions is like, how much involvement is Neil Black going to have and how much budget is Neil Black going to give Omar Pasha, which is also pertinent questions as well. I think... If, if a reasonable budget was put in place and uh, Neil Black took a massive step back uh, and, and allowed Omar to get on with it, I don't think anybody could complain too much, uh, to be perfectly honest. I think there, there are other comments regarding that coming later, so I'll, I'll leave that one there uh, and then probably get into a bit more detail a little later. Would you have Matheson back next year? Maybe not on ice, but just as a sole assistant coach. Uh, I suppose that depends. I suppose that, that a lot of things about players is it, it's very difficult to say what I would do what, or what I would not do. It depends on the head coach. And the head coach coming in is going to have far more experience uh, and knows what they want more than any of us sat in the seats are, are going to do that. That's just, just how, how it is. So... Um, I think it's it's very very difficult. It's very difficult uh, to sort of say who, who who you would have back, who who should come in. I think now with with a, a fresh off ice person coming in, I think it's time to now allow them to make those decisions and allow them to um, allow them to uh, to recruit a team and. Miss Sharp, what do you think of the accidental early reveal on social media? Oh, wow. Um, I think I got a question regarding this. Yes, I did. Uh, comes from Lenny at Mr. Underscore Leinster on Twitter. And he said, in line with today's early release and immediate retraction and continue, continued lack of proof read posts, who was the social media ambassador the club appointed recently and are they still in the role? Um I don't think it wasn't a social media ambassador that was appointed. It was a sales executive that was appointed recently. Um, but yes, not a good look. And and this is this is another thing. What one of the things that, that annoy me? This, this, it's been an open secret about Omar Pasha. Pretty much everybody knows <laughs> has known known it is going to happen. Simply because everyone knew he was leaving Dundee. He did that interview on Sunday night that was revealed by the Dundee Stars. Uh, and then the Dundee Courier put out that he was coming to Nottingham. <laughs> so it was pretty much an open secret. But what annoyed me is there's been absolutely no build-up to the announcement. Any other club, uh, any other club in the Elite League would have done some sort of build-up, build got social media interest, got really banging the drum for it. And then, I think it was about half past two this afternoon, wasn't it? It suddenly appears. Uh, and I spotted it. Somebody put something on Twitter. I think David Carnell, who, who um, I, I sent a comment in earlier, he put something like, oh, it's finally been revealed. So I replied to him and says, uh, Where, whereabouts? And he sent me a screenshot of the uh, release from the Panthers website. And... And then he sent the link, and I clicked on it, and there it was. And I, and I went on the front page of the Panthers website, and I went through all the social media, and there was nothing there. So it, clearly the button had been pressed too early. And I just thought, oh, no, this is 
this is bad. And it, it, it's just such a bad look because now there hasn't been... Everyone knew it was then, it was coming up, it was coming at some point, even though they didn't say when. And it was great. It, it, it came with a big fanfare at six o'clock and there was an interview to go with it, which is fantastic. But the damage had already been done for me. Um, and it doesn't look good on the media team for, for, for doing that. And I suppose in a way, though, it does show what a big job that Omar Pasha has got in front of him when, when things like that are happening. Um, and the thing is, we know that probably wouldn't happen at any other club at all. Um, so, yes, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And I can see th there's a lot of comments coming in about certain people w within the organisation I'm not going to make comment on that for the for the simple reason that it is not up to me. It's now up to Omar Pasha. So let's let's give Omar Pasha the chance to make the changes that he sit, sees fit, um, and let him make uh, let him make those decisions. Um, and I can understand why there's a lot of uh, uh, of anger and a lot of people in the club are coming under fire totally get that especially with everything that, that, that's happened but you know we, we've had this new ceo come in let him come in and make the change let him see let him see what needs to be done and then let him make them changes let's not have a social media pile on on people because that that's not good that's not good um you know all the all the be kind thing and everything you know let, let's just take a step back uh, and think because you know there's, there's human beings involved here and I'm sure some of them will watch this or they'll hear about this or they'll see what happens on social media let's not have a pile on it you know let's just be kind we're fair enough you know constructive criticism is one thing but you know let, let, let's not just say this should happen that should happen let's allow Omar Pasha to make uh, make the changes that he needs to. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at some of the comments. Um, Mike Cyclone, I think personally Neil Black needs to make his mind up either us or Glasgow. I think that's I think that's a good point. Um, but at the same time, if he's going to leave the Panthers solely in in the domain of, of Omar Pasha then is that such a bad thing? If Neil Black is just giving a budget and then stepping away, I can't see too much of an issue with that. It depends how much Neil Black is going to get involved, if he's going to get involved at all. I think that's the thing. And I guess we will see what will happen with that over the next sort of few few weeks or months even. Ellipsis, could it also make it easy to sell if a CEO is in place? It would be much easier to transition to a new owner. That's a fair point. A fair point. Um, but there's something else coming on that later from, from another one of the questions. So uh, hold that thought. Um, let's see. Rob Asprey, Dan Kerry is not bad as an interviewer, but similar to Chris's comments, is he really the best person to interview players, coaches, staff? Wouldn't Dan Green have a better insight as a former player. That's a fair point. Uh, another thing that, that slightly annoyed me with the interview, and it's only a minor thing, but there was clearly only one microphone because uh, that was pointing at um, Omar Pasha, so his audio was fine. But when Dan was asking the questions, it was a bit echoey. So I, I know that's probably me being a bit anal because I work, work in broadcasting and I sort of know these things. So that, to me, that was a bit like sort of hand fingernails going down a blackboard um but uh, but uh yeah it, that was just one one thing that, that did slightly annoy me from from that interview um paul carruthers he says one thing omar is great at is getting the fans on side and good interaction which looks like it's been lacking in nottingham very much so and, and fan interaction was one of the things that he really did um home in on on, on in that interview so I, I would like to think that going forward, there's going to be a much better relationship between the fans and the club. And, and 
boy, is that overdue. And long is it overdue. And I hope uh, Omar Pasha has some ideas in place to, to change that without a doubt. Uh, Mike Cyclone again, he says, it might be wishful thinking, but I'd, I'd have liked Corey in the role of DOH. I always thought his recruitment was decent. However, saying that, I'm super happy, excited with what they have done. I mean, I've talked about Corey the past, past couple of weeks on here. I think Corey's best destiny is as a head coach. Um, but I don't think he will be the right person to bring back to Nottingham for the simple reason that he has got nothing left to prove here or nothing left to achieve here because he's achieved it all already. Um, so what would the motivation be for him if he came back? That's the only thing uh, thing that I, I would say. Chris Gadsby, evening, Chris. Good to have you along. Chris Gadsby, of course, he does, covers the Panthers for BBC Radio Nottingham. He says... Got to build the brand back up for me. More in the Nottingham Post, BBC, etc. I'd like to. I like to set home colours, but that might be wishful thinking. Um, yes, I, I think that's that's one thing. There's there's got to be more of a media presence with local television. Certainly in the Evening Post, there's been nothing in the Evening Post for for years. I think. Uh, so that needs sorting out. Basically, it needs to go out. As a, it needs to get out there as much as possible. So yes, uh, Evening Post, more more on the BBC. I mean, I remember when Chris Ellis used to do this sort of every week, there was something with someone uh, pre-COVID and, and that uh, 1920 season. And that was great and really, really good engagement with that. Um, Anthony Russell, weirdly, I think, given how up and down it's been at Panthers, someone with a two, three-year project is the right thing. Um yeah, I, but I mean, I suppose you had the same thing with with Gigi Set and, and Tim Wallace, which I, you know, I was very, very much in favour of giving that time, and it was given nearly three seasons. So you have to give it time, it ha and ha people have to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day, so you, you've got to give Omar Pasha the time to put the changes in place that he wants to put in place. And I hope he's given that time. I really, really do because it. It, it is needed. It is definitely needed. Uh, back to the questions. And Chris Lovell says, why CEO rather than GM? Does it give him more fiscal control? Are these the first stages uh, in solidifying the office setup proceeding to a potential listing on the for sale market? Or CEO to give Neil Black more time to focus on the Glasgow clan, meaning Panthers are in safe hands without him? Yeah, I think we just talked about that earlier. Uh, I referred to, to this question coming up. Uh, I, I don't think it's CEO. Rather, I think it's I think it's CEO because a GM is, I think, fully off ice. A director of hockey is fully on ice. Um, so I think CEO probably reflects the fact that he is essentially the GM, but also with some on ice responsibilities with regards to recruiting a head coach. So that's probably where that comes from. Uh, it's, pro it's probably a pimped-up GM is the way <laughs> we, we look at it. <laughs> um, so, so that's what I would say. I, I think the more likely scenario that you put there, Chris, is the fact that he will hopefully become more hands-off with the Panthers to concentrate on the clan because th there is more potential there with regards to the clan owning the, uh, or managing the arena. Uh, which I think think is a fair point. Uh, and then that leaves Omar Pasha sort of more or less in sole control of the Panthers, which I'm more than happy with. Um, and I hope that it, that is the way it is going to be approached, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Sean Phillips, Cardiff fan, good friend of mine as well. He says, is the key to Pasha being successful in Nottingham a hands-off approach from Neil Black and all connected people previously with regard to social media engagement season ticket structure etc with the exception of the overall budget given to him by neil black none of the this isn't how we do things here sort of stuff um so yes yeah i mean i think that's what we've been, been saying i think it and i think chris makes a point here on on the comments uh, it's an important point you make. If new off-ice people, for example, are coming in, it's not all going to be announced tomorrow. Patience is a virtue, give him time. Yeah, I think there has to be a little patience, but I think changes were, will be made 
definitely where they will need to be made uh, from, from what Omar Pacha was saying. Uh, and I, I fully expect him to make those changes where he feels they need to be made. Um, so I think there probably has to be a little patience with regards to that, but I, I do believe that there probably will be a bit of a clean sweep uh, and, and some new ideas and some new people brought in, especially if he has the ambition for the Panthers to be the gold standard at everything. Um, so I, I think that that could, that could happen. Um, Anthony Russell, Doucette and Wallace had the reins on. Hopefully Patrick is allowed a free reign or is the, or this appointment is pointless ultimately. Uh, Black's methodology is more stale than a Christmas cake in June. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I'm hoping that this is a, is a new direction and not a false dawn. And um, that it is that Omar Patrick is coming in with pretty much complete control. I really hope that is the case. I really do. Um, Andrew Williamson, do you think Pasha's appointment is a step towards a change of ownership? You know, this is there's a lot of people saying it's interesting that a lot of a lot of different people are saying that. So I guess that's a wait and see. Um, I I'm more I, I will more sway towards the I think he, he, he's he's more hands off uh, with regards to concentrating on the Glasgow clan, but still remaining as the owner. I think that's the way it will probably go. A um, couple of similar questions here. Uh, Ashley at Ashley941300. Uh, and Bob Starr, who I think he's from Sheffield. I can't, can't remember if he's a Steel Dogs or Steelers fan, but at who underscore am underscore I at, uh, on Twitter. Um, Ashley says, if we do indeed take a few Dundee players, as it could be coming coming and having some influence in signings. Who are the three you take from Dundee? Um, Bob says, do you think he will bring any players with him? If so, who will be the top of the list to come from Dundee? I've got to say, him going to you guys makes me think you will become a threat again. Roll on good competitive games. Um, yes, I totally concur with that. Um, but regards Dundee... Whether he brings players with him or not remains to be seen. Uh, but obviously, there are some very, very good players in Dundee this season. And, and if there was three for me, I would have Combs, Bankson and um, Kyle Haas. Kyle Haas to bring the toughness that we were most definitely missing this season. Um, Bankson, because he scores a lot of goals and points. And Charlie Coombs, Combs, because he was outstanding. Uh, and also scored a lot of points. Fourth highest point scorer in the Elite League, Charlie Combs, and made the All-Star team as well. So they would be the three for me from from, from Dundee. Um, there, there were uh, others. I think uh, Sancho I'd, I'd consider as well. Um, but if if he's going to bring any, I can't see there, there being more than two, if any, to be honest. And if, if, he, if it's two for me, it would be Combs and Haas. Uh, just to, you know, Haas because of what he brings. Not only defensively, very good defenseman. Yeah, he got a lot of penalty minutes, but his plus minus rating was outstanding. Uh, and he brings that toughness that we were so desperately missing this season. Um, and Combs because, you know, he, he will hopefully come in and score a lot of points if indeed he is coming here. Um, it has been rumoured. We will have to wait and see, I guess. Um so yes, uh, th th those are the ones that I I would would have uh, popped to the comments. Um, I'll come to Chris. I'll come to that in a second. Uh, Anthony Russell says the Omar Pasha mask comes off. Neil Black and I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you pesky kids and that blah bloke on YouTube. <laughs> oh, Scooby Doo. <sighs> that takes me back to to my childhood. <laughs> Uh, next question, Jay at Jammy Courts on Twitter. He says, with Omar Pasha becoming the Panthers CEO and with his knowledge of the Elite League, do you think he will try and establish links with some NIHL teams to help bring through some exciting, new exciting talent? Let us hope so. Let us hope so. There is an, there is an NIHL one team in the same building. Uh, and I hope, uh, and I know that, that there were... that. 
uh, Guy Doucet and Tim Wallace did work with the Lions, which was great to see. Um, let's hope that uh, Omar Pasha continues that on, even strengthens those links as well. Um, he's been a good developer of, Br of British talent. If you all remember, Jordan Kelsall went to Dundee for a season on loan from the Panthers and then came back to the Panthers. Um, so we all know that Pasha is, 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 you know, up for developing young Brits and Jordan County has, has done so well in Dundee. And um, so, yeah, I, 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 I think maybe a, a link with a national league team, uh, um, with, Two new ones added now in Hull and and Bristol. Uh, in Bristol's a bit far away, but Hull's, Hull's a possibility. Leeds a possibility. Maybe Peterborough definitely. Let's establish some links with the national league team and then with the Lions as well, and, and we can, can have a nice little um, uh, ladder system uh, where your kids can see an actual progression instead of getting to the Lions and it just stops dead. Let's see some links in where we can have a, a proper progression throughout all age groups leading to the Elite League. That would be fantastic. And let's hope that something like that will be looked at. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Uh, Anthony, again, if, if during the Elite Series draft, they, they had a post-show about the picks, only one of them knew who Vanya Antonov was, Omar Pasha. Mm. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that, that Omar Pasha he, he studies the game very well uh, and definitely knows his stuff and and I, I think has a lot of very very good contacts throughout the game so that could uh, that can only work in in the panthers benefit i would say okay final question by me 36 minutes we're going and the final question is here from paul gretton so if you've got any more pop them over to twitter uh, at um at John O'Bullard or pop them in the chat box uh, and I will get to them. But for now, Paul Gretton says, if Pasha held a live Q&A via YouTube at any bar at the arena, would you like to be the one asking the questions as not all fans can travel to Nottingham in the week? Uh, I, I saw something earlier about Q&A &A, uh, right at the top of the comments. I'll see if I can find it again. Rob Asprey says, do you expect a Q&A from Pasha with fans soon? Yes, I, I would. I would think that would be a, a very, very positive thing to do, uh, is to have a Q&A with the fan base. I would guess Saltbox would be the most likely venue if something like that was to happen. As regards me asking the questions, um, I'm not involved with the club, so I doubt that that would happen, but I, I could see someone like... Ken Feast, who, who's the Panthers announcer, I think he, he would be ideal for that sort of thing. I also like the idea of it being um, done over YouTube, as well as to people uh, who are there in person, because then it allows more people to get involved. Obviously, if you're having a Q&A like that, the YouTube will have to be monitored, so the questions would have to be vetted as they come in, um, because yeah, th th there will be people there who will try to be funny you may even try and cause trouble with regards to q a uh, online so so that would have to be vetted by someone but yeah I, I think the more people that can see it because not everyone can get to nottingham on, on a week night um yeah wh why not I, I think that would be a very very good thing to uh, very very good thing for omar pasha to do or and also to give the chance the fans the chance to to question him as well about his ambitions for the club we've seen it in in that interview uh let, let's hear what some of the ideas are a bit more in depth i think uh, i think that's a great idea and, and uh, uh omar if you're watching this and um, you were tagged in so there's always a possibility um get on it <laughs> salt box <laughs> uh, and then uh and uh Yes, I think that that would be a very good way to to get your message out to the fan base. Uh, so let, let's see if something like that happens. I've just seen a couple more comments go back up. Uh, Miss Charlotte says, can you imagine how much British hockey could grow if local Nottingham teams joined together to create a big hype? Couldn't agree more with you there. Um, 
Andrew Williamson, uh, or even if it's recorded and then shown on YouTube. Yeah, I, I think I like the idea of it being live on YouTube or streamed live with, with some way of getting questions in because then that allows people to ask questions or comment in the moment. Um, but obviously, it just needs to be vetted at the time uh, just to sort of filter out the idiots who will no doubt come along and <laughs> ask questions. Okay, 30 more seconds, uh, and uh, then I will be on my way. But if there's any last questions, do put them in quickly. Uh, a reminder, there will be a hockey chat next week because I can imagine there'll be more coming from this, and I'm sure more news will come out over the week. And we've got the Great Britain games as well. But uh, next week will be the last hockey chat of the season before I... Uh, I take uh, I take a, a bit of a break because I've got a, a few junior tournaments to cover coming up, so uh, I, I'll be heavily involved with those. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want to get your questions in for next week, please do so. Uh, DMs are open all the time, or just pop them in Twitter at John O'Bullard. Uh, Anthony Russell, a question from a Mister D Sims feed dies. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's stop everything now okay well the feed is going to die right here thank you so much for joining me for the second night in a row but obviously couldn't let this announcement go by without talking about it it's such a, a, a big thing for the nottingham panthers a uh, big announcement um, you know so uh, obviously uh, there was a lot to talk about regarding it. Now it is finally official. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everyone, who you sent questions in. Such, uh, sh sh such short notice as well. Um, so don't forget, this will be available as a podcast very shortly. Don't forget, there's also the hockey chat from last night. Um, if you, you go on my YouTube feed, uh, and also subscribe if you could uh, just uh, click on and click the notification bell then you'll get notified every time that the video goes live um, but once again thank you so much for joining me at such short notice pleasure to have your company as always thanks for getting involved in the discussion thanks for getting involved on twitter and i'll speak to you again next week take care everyone bye bye <laughs>